Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to, I don't even know what episode this is, of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. What up? How's it going? It's tired. It's been a while. It has been. Not for them, but for us. Yeah, people don't realize, even though we just dropped an episode Sunday, Sunday vibes, uh, you and I haven't sat down over two weeks? Maybe. Almost two weeks? Right around there. Yeah, it's been a minute, Um, which is what happens when you have a busy lifestyle. Yeah, a very... Very busy lifestyle. Hectic. Reflecting lifestyle. over the last two weeks, it has been. It's been a crazy. Lot. Moving and shaking, shaking and moving. Yeah, you look good though. Thanks. My messy. Per per usual. My messy look. I didn't want to put heat on my hair, so. I t- well, there's, there's enough of that going around in the middle of a. Just. What's rough the, what's rough the stretcher. Pan- pandemic of heat. Like what would be. What do you mean? Like what would be the word. Because that's what we're in. It's just like an it's, it's just hot. It's hot as hell. It was like the heat index was like 110 today. I was, I know it's hot because I was texting my mom and she said, it's hot as hell in this house. You're in, talking to your mom? In the text. And I was like, for her to say that, it's hot. Yeah, mama, mama don't cuss. So, um, it's hot. It's hot. When I picked up Savi and Mahalia opened up the door, she was like, whew. It's hot. And I was just standing there sweating, like just, just standing sweating. Yeah, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. And I don't understand why. I don't know who it benefits to be this hot. I don't know if there's anyone who's genuinely happy it's this hot. Um, yeah, it's hot. Very hot. Usually what happens during the summertime though, right? Yeah, but it's, and I know people say it every single year. It's a different heat. Like this is not... It might be the same heat as last year. Last year was hot. Yeah. But it's, this is, this is not the summertime temperatures I grew up with. I mean, I've been doing summers for 32 years now. Like I, summers, I was outside all day. Just, you know, the, the heat hit different when you, when you get on the other side of 30. No, no, it's, yeah. it's, no, I, it does. no, I could not be outside all day in this. I don't think any of our kids, like you take Savi outside. She says she wants to go outside and she'll be quick to be like, okay, <laughs> I want to go inside. I want to go, go inside. This is not the summer. These are not the summers of our youth. This is a different heat index. It, and you know, what's crazy is I used to, and millions of thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids. Now it's millions. Millions are doing like foot, getting ready to do like football, yeah. full gear, like in another, outside, in a, not indoor in another month. It would be the time I would norm when I was in college. I'd report for football camp. Miss me with that. 100, 100 degree heat, full gear, helmets, shoulder pads, like that's some slavery mentality right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I ever did it and didn't pass out. Mm-mm. Like we had this thing. Because we had summers a summers were different. We had a uh, we had a fitness test. It's called the the Pride Shuttle. So shuffle shuttle. It was a shuttle. Sounds like a dance. Nah, it was anything but. Um, and it was it was the fitness. It was basically uh, to gauge whether or not you prepared in the off season for to report to camp. So as a freshman coming in, no one actually prepares. They tell you like, oh yeah, we're gonna have a fitness test when you get in, but they don't really tell you what it's like. And the upperclassmen, they're not gonna tell you because they want to see you. They want to see you faint. So it's basically you have to yeah. run. I don't know how many yards. I don't know if it's forty yards. You basically have to run up and down like four or five times, but it's timed. So if you don't make it within uh, the time based on your position, you got to do it again. So you basically have to do it until you pass or until you pass out. So my that's, freshman my freshman year, I'm like... demonic. It is. So my freshman year, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm good. You know, I'm Steve. Like, I'm, I'm that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, psh, I you got... passed out, didn't you? I got this. No, but what I didn't do is I didn't pace myself. 
So what you're supposed to do is you you stride it out for the first two trips up. And then the last two or last three or whatever, that's when you sort of you pick it up a little bit. Because as a receiver, I, ha- I think I had to do it in like, it was something crazy. Maybe like 20, 20 some seconds, 30 some seconds. Like I don't, it, whatever it was, it was. Adequate. Keep your scholarship. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. And um, I, I, I made it. But I, it was as close as I'd ever gotten to. And you don't have to do this in like gear or anything. You're oh, just you're running just shorts, 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 shirt, cleats. But cleats are heavy. Jess it is as close as I've ever come to blacking out. Like my my eyes were pulsing. I saw like the stars. I was like, oh, is this what it's like before you you meet God? So <laughs> I had to sit down. Luckily, I think that's the only thing we did the first day. It um, better be. Not the first day, but you know, you do the I think you do it like in the morning or in the afternoon. I can't remember. I'll take a break and then go back. And then you and then you come back for actual practice. But I was passing out. I was I was real close to passing out. And then, you know, I came back my second year. I I was a savvy veteran. You know, I knew what to do. You stride out. But as a freshman, I was just trying to sprint, you know, I was trying to make an impression, you know, trying to show coach like you need me. And I almost needed an ambulance. I needed an IV. Cause your boy was done. So, um, I, I don't know how I ever made it like this heat now. That's why I say when you get on the other side of 30, that heat hit different. It's just global warming. It's just different. It heat. It's different. It's, it's not, not, it's not, this heat. is not the same summer. It's not we different grew up heat. With. Summer it's was not. hot. This is this is not hot. This is damnation. Yeah, like we're paying for somebody's sins, right? Yes. <laughs> who did like we need to know who got us like, in this heap of trouble? I, I will send some flowers and apologize. I will it's, grovel. It's crazy. No, it heats different. And I, of course, like an idiot today, I went out black polo jeans. Like I was all black, black on black, on black, blue black. Yeah. So luckily, I work. In I a, think I've tanned. I think when, yeah. Arm. When I when I go out to work, I work in. And out of people's homes, so that's good or bad because if they have AC or if, if you AC. yeah if you you out there in rural North that Carolina, I don't know what the AC. You got is. that window unit and it ain't getting any kicking. And they got all the other doors closed. They got that unit for one. And then room. they they had the door open like oh we're gonna let some air like no this that's making it worse. Yeah, yeah. like it's hotter in here than. And then you're just inviting bugs to join. Mm, bugs don't bother me, but they bother me. It's crazy. Y'all be safe out there. <clears throat> drink drink your don't water. Don't go out there. That's really drink your water. Get your get your liquid IV. I have already said I am not doing any more work events outside. Yeah, right. Not no. No, because I don't have to. It's not mandatory. So all of the outside events I've done have been like voluntary, and I don't yeah. know why. So I'm not This hat used to fit over my over my locks. It's not it's You not probably working. just need to unsnap it. No, I need to um I need to get a retwist. That's what I need to do. In the meantime, just unsnap. You got three snaps. Just I'll get pull that them out. For... No, I got two. Oh, I don't have three. Yeah. Some of us can count. Let me get two. That might be it. Just go. I had it. I had it. I had it snap tighter because Savi was wearing it the other day. Looking like a little a little G. You get a picture? A little Coolio. I might have taken a picture. I don't know. So what you been up to? I've been ripping and running and ripping running. Ripping and running. Again. What's up with the shirt you got on? Um, This is Open Door. Mm-hmm. For um, I am a member, proud, card proud. carrying, pin wearing member yeah. of the American Black Bourbon Society. I just threw the American. Um, it's just Black Bourbon Society. Um, oh, so Europeans can't they don't they don't get in, huh? I mean, the blacks can. Um, you said American Black Bourbon. I mean, bourbon is American. So the border, you're saying it's a border to the Black Bourbon Society Ameri- or closed. Bourbon is American. You can't get bourbon anywhere but America. You can't use the word bourbon unless it's American. I'm just saying they might want to come over and taste the goodness. I just threw American because bourbon is Cause American. Because you're, you're a nationalist. That's um, right. Yes, I'm a nationalist. She's a nationalist. Um, the Black Bourbon Society, which I am a proud member of. Paying um, member. Paying member of. I don't know why you had to emphasize that. So, oh, and I we're, can't we're not like we're not like a there's no honorable mention like she no. paid dues. Yeah, she in there. I mean, I was invited to the event, but I don't know that it was known that I was a member. Um, I just got my membership like last month, the beginning of last month. But um, they are doing essentially the open door tour. Charlotte happens to be a stop, um, so Jim Beam sponsored it. 
went to a few events, got David to come to an event, and it was just great black excellence. I was out there. Of people who appreciate it's hot. bourbon. It's hot out there. And too. happened to be black. It was hot. Of course, um, I went out there in some chinos. He did. I was in, I had like from here out. I yeah, showed up and just, saw people in like sundresses and just had them booty bleeders and on maxi jet. And I was like, Oh, I didn't realize we were coming glamorous. And they were like, No, nah, we should have come like you. I was like, Yeah, I wasn't trying to be cute for nobody. Just, um, had, just had them thighs yeah, on. Yeah, they were out. Those, my thighs were eating up those shorts. Um, I, lo- I, lo- I loved every minute that's of That's why it. I don't wear shorts. Um, it was glorious. I'm sure lots of people appreciated every minute of it. Yeah, me being chief among them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was but with yeah, you. So it was fun. If you are um not if you are not a member of the Black Bourbon Society, you don't have to be black. Um but it's encouraged. Yeah, there's uh, some colonizers out there. There were there were a few. <laughs> some infiltrators. Um, there were a few. Uh but uh highly encourage you to join. I think the next stop is Houston. H Town. Um, so Missy, told, what up? I told Missy, I said Missy and Craig. I tagged her in a post. I think they're gonna hop over to LA. So I meant to tag I'm Lyle and then I remembered he's not really in LA proper. No, he's not. Um, so I was like, well, I don't he's wanna... not. Uh, up until at least within the last few episodes, a uh, avid listener of fresh vibes, is yeah. cousin Lyle. So hopefully he'll hear this and hear his, yeah, we'll his shout out message. Um, but yeah, if you hear it, if you're in LA, they'll be popping there. And I think Orlando. And then I want to say last stop is Atlanta, which is where it's based, but it was just of a course. great, it was, I ended that weekend like, Oh, it felt good to be black and excellent. Like that's, that's how I felt. I enjoyed the weekend. I enjoyed being around the blacks of a certain caliber, um, you know, whiskey, bourbon drinkers, cigar smokers, employed, social, entrepreneurial. It was just, it was a good time. Um, So yeah, I decided to wear my shirt, wrap it up, you know, we try to wrap the black black goodness yep um and then i'm also drinking from a glass that i got from the event um at the black bourbon society but (laughs) there's tequila in there so there's that but anyway i just didn't want to open my my bottle of of jim bean black that i got i'm I'm saving that for what i don't know but i'm i'm hanging on to it for a minute yeah you even drink jim bean i don't we don't even drink jim bean like that i used to back in the day no yeah i had a bottle remember i had a plastic bottle Nope. It was like a fifth of um Did I drink it? Jim Beam. You probably did while I, I was pregnant. Did. Um Yeah. I went I went on I went on a tear when Jess was pregnant. With sovereign. So like I just ended that pregnancy with sympathy. only with only white liquor. Sympathy uh Sympathy drinking? Sympathy uh alcoholism. <laughs> Anyway, I'm like, baby, I'm 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 a handle, I'm a handle these bottles for you, baby. My feelings were hurt. I had this big bottle of crown vanilla that a friend had given me. And he finished it. And you know what's crazy? I've since graduated from yes. like Crown. I wish and, you had graduated before you finished my yeah, cause all like, my Crowns. Like crown's, only, crown's only like 80 proof, honey. Something. And you I gotta love, be at least, at least 90. I love Crown Vanilla. Like a whiskey sour with Crown Vanilla used to be my thing. Finished it. It was huge. It was a huge bottle. I put in work. I put in that good work. It was a handle. It was a whole hand. It was, I don't even think I got to drink from it. I should put it on my mantle. I conquered I'm actually very upset. Like I was very upset with oh, you. Oh, is this is this like Yeah, no, this is uh, like this you is triggering. I'm kidding. I was actually very upset with you. I thought it was very selfish that you knew I couldn't drink I did it you, I did it for you and no, me. No, you didn't. You were you were being I selfish. It for you and me. You were being very selfish. You not drank me? You selfish? You, Come on, babe. The epitome of selfish. I'm the but most I'm selfless person. I'm not gonna do this to the rush vibes. I am the least selfish person. <laughs> okay, Trump. You've ever uh, met. I'm not gonna do this to the I'm rush vibes. Least, I'm least the least selfish person. Yeah, it's probably God over here disparaging your husband on on a public forum. You're, What's wrong with you? you? Were selfish. you see how I see? Yeah, see how God work? Oh my gosh, what disrespectful insect just yeah, bit me? The Lord be working quick. In my face. The quickness. And I'm over here. I'm over here just flourishing, untouched. You're about to get God unscathed because I'm pure. You're about to get. Don't God. forget well, it. Hopefully, y'all can America, see it. Vibe tribe. I'm just gonna do this the whole show. I'm the purest of. <laughs> Of the team here. Anyway, of the team here. Rush what, are you talk, what are you bringing to this? Man, it's been a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and for sake of beating dead horses, I don't want to just like, 
go back over everything that's been happening in the news. But obviously, um, the biggest is, you know, Roe v. Wade being overturned. It was overturned. And what's crazy is we talked about um, abortion by way of another topic. I think it was one of your tangents. You kind of went off on the uh, the religious right and how they like to impose their beliefs on mm-hmm. on the greater society. And then like three weeks later, because we talked about the, the opinion that it leaked. Yes. And that's that's how we got there. So I, I guess we all knew it was coming. Uh, and some people even knew before the, the opinion leaked that it was coming because you kind of saw the pieces being moved into place over the last probably six six years or so, even maybe before that. But it happened. It did. Um, I think that's probably the bad thing about this prolonged since we've last recorded. Yeah. I, th- I think I've let all of my emotions out on the topic. It's probably good. It is. Because um, you've been on here. I had, <laughs> I, y'all, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a descent. <laughs> I had a descent. Just, just was one big walking for, descent for the people. She was descending uh, all, of, all up oh and through gosh. his, all up and through Whatever his house. Whatever descending consists of, I was it. I was about to come up in here and just blast, blast it, but. Yeah. I, I think I realize, and mind you, I'm a car talker. Like I talk when I drive. Like I talk things out when I drive, and because to everyone yourself? has, yeah, and, oh. yeah, and because everyone has Bluetooth, it just looks like I'm on a phone call. Um, but a lot of times, like you be I, arguing with yourself, not arguing, but like getting, <laughs> I will, I will get points out. Like just sometimes you need to hear it. Like thinking about it doesn't do. You be, you be interrupting it. yourself. No, <laughs> you, you, get, you get on yourself and like I'm speaking. You're you need to wait until I'm me, done. You're not gonna make me seem crazy. I'm not crazy. Like who? People, um, like who is she talking? Is she okay? I'm talking to me, and I think it's okay to talk to yourself. Like I even have a text thread with myself. Like I send myself stuff, like information that I need. You put yourself on and stuff. I be putting myself on. Yeah. I stay putting myself on. Sometimes I forward stuff to my other IG. You send accounts. memes to yourself? No. Why would I do that? I send memes to myself. So you're judging me? <laughs> I'm you just me, like what? So I'm, you can laugh. Later I'm fascinated with that there is someone on the other end of the the self communicate communicative like spectrum. Like you communicate with yourself. Uh, but I communicate like productive things. Memes are extremely productive. No, they're not. not the you, know, you realize like seventy percent of my social media usage it consists of memes and anyway. gifts. Um, so I went back and forth. Memes are good for the soul. I thought we were going to record sooner. So I was trying to like prepare my points, my, my descent for this. Why didn't we record sooner? Um, I don't know. You've been slacking. So I've been slacking. You don't want to be running all up and around Charlotte missing interviews. I recorded like the very next day. Missing interviews. Anyway. um, Oh, and, and James said he's been following you on Instagram for a minute. So am I following him back? I don't know. Ask yourself. <laughs> ask yourself if y'all are following James. What's his name? IG? Dr. Elite. Is that his IG? Underscore. He has a brother with all the all the dope fashion pics. So we're just going to take this pause so Jessica can, can follow James. Although she's had plenty of opportunities to do so. Oh, his account is private. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's 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 a privilege. He privi- probably it's hit a, me. He probably hit me. I had a honor, season where I was getting a lot of followers. It's an honor and a privilege season. to 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 follow James. So yeah, um, I hope he gives. I hope he makes you wait. The mandatory me wait. mandatory well, seventy two hours me, too. If I request you and you make me wait, I'll I will res- I will. Yeah, because right. you know why? Because you petty. I will take back my request. Like what you do that you can't accept queen, my follow. Queen petty. You can't accept my follow. You are gonna make me wait? Nah miss me with that um but yeah so i had like talked this out thought it out i was ready to come in here blasting christians blasting men just blasting everybody um and then i was just like you know it's not some battles are worth fighting some battles when you fight the victory will actually amount to something Mm. I don't think this is one of those. I do feel that America is in a bad place. Mm. America is misidentified as a nation. Uh, Are we a Christian nation? Are we honoring separation of church and state? Are we truly caring about life in terms of save the babies, save the fetuses? Are we really 
taking into account the thought process of when someone comes to make the decision of I'm going to have an abortion, excuse me, when a woman makes the decision of I'm going to have an abortion, all the thoughts that went through her mind right. before she, she walked past a crowd of people who were just ridiculing Pro- protesting, her, protesting her, making signs. Back in the day, I believe you had to go and then wait 24 hours before you could actually have the abortion. We'll adopt your baby. So, like, then having to go back and do it. Like, I don't think people recognize what's happening, what that process consists of. Pete Buttigieg had an interview on Fox News, and um, his response, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but his response was so spot on. Um, That I, I, and... One thing that really frustrates me in terms of like the Christian community, like, is this a Christian co- country? Are we, is America a Christian com- country? If it is, then a lot of the right wing politics are incorrect because you're, you need to follow, like, love thy neighbor as thyself. You need to, you know, Jesus fed 5,000. Like, you need to be feeding, like, in terms of like the Republican right wing, all of that in terms of tax, taxes and, and, n- being very selfish i would say um as a collective that doesn't align with the word of god so i think there needs to be a fundamental configuration of is this a christian nation i really think it boils down to okay if we are a christian nation if abortion seems to be like the number one issue in this country it's more than just the government is mandating that I can or cannot have an abortion. I have no skin in the game. I've had three kids. I have had a tubal as of right now. I can't. But you do have skin in the game. My, I mean, for the sake of my children. Yeah. For my, the three daughters that I have who, as of right now, have no real autonomy over their bodies. Um, but if it's a, this is the Christian thing to do, we need to protect life god created things i think we get to a dangerous point when man tries to govern on the behalf of god Mm. that was that was good i liked that i liked how that felt um because i i I think a lot of people just kind of like see you taking the whole conversation with yourself thing amping it up so now you're hyping yourself up yeah that's nice um i think a lot of people if you go if you're christian if you're a believer a lot of people seem to think like God is just one step above them. And and if you recognize that like God is the creator, like if you truly believe this, uh, you know, God's will, everything in, in, in a nutshell is controlled by God. There's nothing you can do unless it's ordained, planned by him that can help with his plan. Like, all of this like if it's just one big marvel universe it's just it's already planned it's already figured it out he's already figured it out so multiverse the multiverse so if when people think that they can help facilitate that without actually like in my opinion consulting and making sure they're doing it we're not in a safe place like Mm -hmm. people are oh protect the baby what if this person is a scientist what if this person's going to cure cancer and i hate to be so blunt about it but If a woman is pregnant and she's going to have an abortion, God already like, like spoiler alert, God already knew she was going to have an abortion. Um, God is no respecter of man. So he already knew that. Unfortunately, this child is going to come back to me. Like this, this fetus is going to come back to me. This person is not going to be the one who cures cancer. Someone else will do it. Like people box God. I'm like, if he really wants to do something like that's not him, it's not a government's responsibility to to manage that it's not a political party's responsibility to manage that it's the bo- the body of the church that's your responsibility and i think like i was always taught that like if mary had said she didn't want to like birth jesus like god would just found somebody else a martha a penelope a ruth whatever like it's, it's his world. It's, the people are a dime a dozen. He gives free will. And within that free will, if you are a Christian and you walk in that belief, you have the ability to make whatever decisions you choose for your life. Now, this is where faith comes in. You know, this is also where grace and mercy comes in. All of the stuff that we've been raised to, to preach about. But what it really comes down to, in my opinion, is 
Christians of America are not doing their job correctly. Mm. Because if say I'm I'm I end up pregnant, I'm not married, I end up pregnant, um, I'm not in a, an abusive relationship, like all of the parameters where someone might think it's not safe to bring this child into this world. What's the Christian community doing to support that person? Like where, what's my resource? What church can I go to and say, hey, I had premarital sex. They're not going to judge you for doing that. I'm pregnant and I need support for this child or I'm going to have an abortion. Where, where does someone go to get that support? Where does someone who's not financially stable, who's not in a healthy relationship, who's saying that it's either me or this baby and this is the decision like that is a whole separate sector mm. where the Christian community doesn't offer that. Yes, you have people who are protesting, who are fighting and saying we need to protect this fetus. We need to stop abortion, blah, blah, blah. Life starts at heartbeat. That's all great. What are you doing past that? Not from a government perspective, but from this Christian Pentecostal, whatever denomination you're walking in perspective to ensure that this life that you have fought so hard to protect is actually protected because it is more than like th this is more than just a government thing. This is the failure of the Christian community as a whole. And beating people and forcing people into your beliefs and your religion is exactly what we judge people in the Middle East for doing. Um, and honestly, it's, it's nonsense. It's, it's, I mean, even G, even in the Bible with, and I'm sure there are contra there's a contradiction that we found, but even Jesus was straight up like give unto Caesar, what is Caesar's and give unto God, what is God? And I'm not trying to preach a sermon, but like, the person that you are, you know, basing this on and Jesus loves the little children, all of this stuff. He was clear to separate, recognize it. And I think from my perspective, he recognized that it's not a government's responsibility to regulate religion, to regulate relationship with God and to force that on people, especially in a nation where everyone is not a Christian. That's not how you win souls. That's not how you get people to believe. Like everything that is being done, all these laws that are being enforced, you know, now they're they're coming for gay marriage and all that. This, like this isn't, you don't win people in this way. Like we, I have been raised to hear you get more flies with honey. And I've seen like random things posted. Like my cousin shared a video with me where some lady was at a Trump rally and she was like, we're protecting white life. So I'm like, if y'all are like concerned about your population, like y'all need to have your own private meeting and like, this can be for just you, but you don't need to put this on anyone. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying go, people should have abortions. I'm saying when you are in a situation where you realize that your life is no longer, you will be in a place where your life is no longer your own. There are a lot of tough questions you have to ask. And I have, I won't lie. I have asked this question to myself with my first child, my second and my third. And this doesn't, I can say this as a woman, this doesn't say mean I love any of my children any less. This just means that maybe at the time of my pregnancy, I recognized I wasn't in a good place. With Sonoma, I was horrified. I didn't I didn't come and tell you. I I contemplated. I had suffered with severe depression after Sovereign's birth. I didn't recognize myself. I was finally trying to get into a place of getting, you know, a job we were just kind of getting out of a pandemic i didn't want to go back to that person i didn't want to have to be on depression medication i didn't want to feel isolated i didn't want to feel like people only cared about this new baby and i just became a background figure which is something moms deal with and you know me personally i felt like with each kid we've gotten less and less support in terms of like, you know, the first kid, people are like, you don't know what you're doing. We're here. We're going to shower you. After the first kid, people just assume like, oh, you're good. Um, and with the third, I feel like people are just like, oh, you got this, like, holla. Um, like, we'll see you at the grocery store. So I would be a liar if I, if I said the thought didn't cross my mind. Because it's scary. You know, if it's just you and I and we both lose our jobs, 
we can live in a car. We can crash on people's couches. We can hustle. We can figure it out. But when you realize you have to be responsible for another person and your heart is now outside of your body, that's a lot. And and I think maternal instinct steps in with a lot of women who recognize that. If you're in an abusive relationship, it's like, I have to protect this person. And maybe, unfortunately, my way of protecting them is not exposing them and bringing them into this world and bringing them to this danger. So there, like, there is so much that goes into it. Um, and there's, there's so much, there's so many other ways that people need to be supported and chastising someone who feels that this is what's best for me. Like you're not God. If God gives free will, who is a government? Who are people as humans? Like that's, that's how we got to the point of slavery where people misused their power that they derived from God to control others like there's there's a fine line mm-hmm. so that's just my opinion on it again i'm not i'm not i'm not pro abortion i am pro life like if I, i'm i will say that i am i feel that everyone has the right to make the decision that is best for their life if we if you again want to make it a christian thing then what support systems are christian churches our Christian organizations truly offering because if someone is in need, that's the whole purpose of a choice of a church of a community where I am in need. I'm your brother. I'm your sister. Help me. If organizations aren't doing that and then the government's going to enforce things and the government is also not doing that. Well, then you have a, you don't have a win-win situation. Everybody's wrong in this. So, you know, there's, I, I, you know, from the spiritual spectrum, spectrum, there are so many levels and depths to it um, that I've heard. But I think if you just look at it from just a plain perspective, it is ridiculous that someone is telling me what I should do with my body. That's, that this is my body. I have, and I have three daughters. I don't want anyone telling them what they should and shouldn't do with their bodies. I mean, I'm going to tell them because I'm their mama and they had to come from my body to have their body. But as a parent, I recognize that there's only so much, you know, that there's stuff I've done that I know my parents would not have wanted me to do. But that just comes with growing and getting life experience. So, you know, it's I think we're in a twisted place. I feel it's a very hand handmaid's tale. Um so we'll see what happens. But, you know, when it comes to America and America's need to always control something and somebody, it's not a surprise at all. And maybe because I'm a black woman, I'm just kind of like, y'all really upset about like y'all. Now you can get mad. Like, where were you 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 years ago? Like, it's ship has sailed so that's kind of how i feel on that yeah i thought you got all your dissent out before we, before I, I we started you recording a dissent. when a dissent is dissenting you gotta let it dissent dissent dissenting vibes i think that's the name of the episode dissenting, dissenting vibes. vibes dissent vibes oh yeah and then the gun control stuff that they didn't do well they they did something they did a little bit. Oh. They did a dash of, of gun control. Salt Bay. Yeah, they did a little sprinkle of gun Thanks. control. Thanks. Which, I mean, is the first real gun control legislation mm-hmm. since the assault weapon ban in uh, 94, I think. Or maybe it expired it in 94. Clinton did it. When, whenever Clinton was in office, he did it. Because Fourth of July, we had, what, two shootings? If that uh, there's a lot there. There were actually more than two, but I think over there were over 200 and there were over 200 people shot in like combination, like shot and killed. There were like over 200 shootings. I think, Independence Day over over the Fourth of July weekend, <clears throat> which is insane if you think about it. But is it? I mean, or is it the most American Fourth of July? 
we've probably um, ever had. I think it's insane because it's not something that we should normalize, even though it's normal, it, even though it's not irregular. I don't I think that we should fight the urge to normalize it in our minds, because if we ever get to that point, then we then we stop pushing for for change. And although that those that push has up to this point, for the most part, uh, been unsuccessful, you know, it's 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 still worth lives, kids like, you know, elementary school kids, uh, people trying to celebrate on the 4th of July. Uh, those lives are still worth fighting for because they shouldn't be lost under those circumstances. You shouldn't shouldn't lose your life going out to, to celebrate, you know, your country's independence. If that's if that's what you want to do, you shouldn't lose your life going to school, right? That's at six, seven, eight, nine years old. So, I mean, yeah, we're definitely the gun country, but things like these, we we should should fight against the urge to normalize them because there's, there's no chance of progress if, if we kind of give into it. Um, the abortion thing, uh, quick, quick pivot back before we move on. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, I think people look, look at it like in, in a true linear fashion, right? Like it's either I'm, for killing babies or I'm against it, right? And as anyone who's taken the time as if you're not a woman or if you are if you are a woman has taken the time to really understand all of what surrounds the issue, it's a lot more than that. Uh, and it's not so black and white. Like there are, I mean, pregnancy is, is, is rough. Like you can get to a certain stage and certain conditions and certain situations happen and it's either terminate the baby or lose the mother mm -hmm. right and those types of uh abortions those procedures are considered abortions and in some of these states uh that are uh that have projected laws to go into place once you know or i guess rose officially been been overturned you know those be illegal mm -hmm. so you're saying like i gotta die or i gotta risk like serious injury to myself um, for a baby that's probably not going to be born anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think a lot of people who haven't taken the time to do their research, <laughs> do their Google searches, don't understand. And it's just as simple as no, you shouldn't kill a baby. And it's, it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Um, there are certain situations, very real situations that Absolutely. happen, especially like, you know, when you look at, you know, the mortality rate for, for black women who are pregnant, um, that come up. Uh, and then when you think about some states where it's like some some person across the street, if they see that you're going to get an abortion or they get a tip that you're going to get an abortion, they Who's can give abortion tips. They can they can they can dime you out. There's an inside man in the they clinic? can dime they can dime you out. This and that's like, that's 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 the scary part that's where Nazi Germany stuff. That's kind of scary. So, um, you know, I. We're basically heading to a place where abortions either fully or under certain circumstances will be legal in like maybe half or a little less than half mm -hmm. the country. And then they'll be illegal in, in another half. Um, and, you know, that's un that's unfortunate that the Supreme Court felt it's not up to them to provide blanket protection for abortion, but at the same time overruled the New York uh, handgun law, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like, I don't, I don't, you know, I, but, no I'm, life, no but life. I'm, I'm no legal scholar, right? Like I'm, I'm not, I'm just a guy who be doing Google searches. That's, that's all I am. But on the surface, like somebody got to make it make sense mm -hmm. to me, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Math, right. math, not math. The math is not math. Um, so, you know, I, I I just feel like it's uncommon for people to understand that you can be against something, but that doesn't mean that that thing shouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. Like 
uh, I think is Sunny on The View said she doesn't agree with mm-hmm. abortion whatsoever mm-hmm. under any circumstances. And I'm like, <laughs> like any circumstance? Like, yeah. She's, no caveat? <laughs> no after? She's a Democrat, right? She's a liberal. Uh, she, I, 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 she I, I would assume she's more liberal. But that, that just goes to show, right? Dang. So it's not it's, it's not just like, like so I, I kind of disagree. I mean, for the most part, yeah, you would you would think it's more uh, conservative and, and, and right-wing people who are pushing this. And for the most part, they are. They're the ones out in front. But I think there are a lot of people who don't necessarily align left or right who are who say they're they're pro life and are mm-hmm. completely against abortion? So I don't I don't know that but it's, she still says she doesn't think it's the government's true, place. True, true. But not everyone is like Sunny. Mm-hmm. People don't don't understand that you can have your personal beliefs, but yeah. your personal beliefs shouldn't um, shouldn't be pressed upon uh, others. And you know, for for a political party that is so so anti regulation, right? Less red tape. <laughs> they they seem pretty pretty quick to want to regulate uh, women's bodies. So, um, you know, I'm 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 pretty solidly uh, pro pro choice. I think it's it's absolutely up. It should absolutely be up to a uh, woman and and her doctor uh, what happens with her body. Um, and you don't really see a lot of nine month abortions, if mm-hmm. if any at all. Um, and it's just such an extremist example. Yeah, and right. I don't know that a lot of people are using it, but I mean, I have seen it tossed around. It's like, nah, I mean, there's not a lot. Of people aren't aborting babies at, at nine, nine months. months. <laughs> like you, that's Pre- like you said, pregnancy is not easy. Yeah. If I get to nine months, I need a baby at the end yeah. of this. So and to to have to have a reason to not have a baby, that's not an easy decision yeah. to get to. And you look, <laughs> and this this that's a dark decision because that's actually like a legitimate, you know person i know some people say it's a person regardless mm-hmm. but nine months that's like whew. yeah um but yeah i just i just feel like it should be it should be left up to uh to to women and 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 their doctors like i just i just feel like that's that's what it should be it shouldn't even be the doctors it should be well, it, it, the, it should be the woman no that's what i'm saying it's, it's a, a conversation well she can't do it she can't do it herself yeah but a medical a woman can't do it herself. professional should just be responsible for enforcing but that's what they're there for right they're there to be consult. advisors yeah. and and consult and, and tell you tell you to weigh the risks mm-hmm. and this is what could happen this is what you know Objective, this is non-biased right um and i'm i'm a firm <laughs> believer that everybody i was singing it going up the stairs right like our, our middle child she didn't eat and i said okay it's time to go to bed she was like no i want to eat i was like nope you chose not you already ate some so i'm not sending our kids to bed starve um but you chose not to eat so you got to live with the consequences of your decision i'm teaching them young with small things like that but everybody's got to live with the decisions they make okay. uh, should you know christians believe there's an afterlife i mean most religions believe there's some sort of afterlife and you have to answer for the, the things that you've chosen to do in your time here on this earth what happens when you get to that judgment day you know yeah that's that's between at that point it's between you and, and your maker but i don't think that um i think that that decision and the weight of it should mm-hmm. be left up to the to the individual um now whether the the federal government government feels there or the the supreme court feels like it's their um that whether or not it's the federal government's responsibility to provide that blanket protection is one thing but i don't <laughs> think that states should should ban it right like i I just don't think it's something that that should be banned um for for a number of reasons and then it's 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 messy and um very messy all i'm gonna say is there's gonna be something else that comes down the line and just remember what's good for the goose is good for the gander what what what? there's just gonna be there's going to be another no the good for the what what's good for the goose what does that mean What's good for the goose is good for the gander. What kind of? <laughs> You've never heard that statement before. No, I actually haven't. But what kind of? You're a country... whole American. You've never heard that. No, I haven't. Pretty much, what's good for the male goose is good for the gander. I believe the gander is a male goose. The goose is a female. There's so many other like. How have you never heard that? You could have used you could have used stuff though. So it just sounds kind of whack to me, but. Thank you for insulting my. I'm not insulting. No, I just, you definitely I, did. No, it's not it an insult. Kind of whack. It is. So it is say, a, no, it doesn't. You're not whack. This this statement's coming. How have you never heard that statement? Would you be getting on me too when I say my stuff? You'd be like, so, no, I don't. I'm like, yes, oh. you do. 
I haven't heard that one before. I just don't know how you're, you're going to sit up in here in front of the live drive and tell that bold faced lie. Five year old American. 34. You're 35. I'm 34. A whole 35, 35 in November. year old American man. And you've never heard the term what's good for the goose is good for the gander? I, I have not. I've failed. Wow. My whole life up to this point has been a complete failure because I hadn't heard that wow. phrase before. Um, and all of your readings? All of my readings. All of the all of my walks in life. All of the essays you've written. And, and all of the, the, the wise people I've come across know they have never shared that that saying with me. But I've pocketed it now. Yeah. And I'll be sure to use and I'll be much, sure I'll be sure to use it incorrectly. No, I mean, <laughs> I'll use the like first tip on Facebook tomorrow. I'm gonna go looking for a it's a tip for, for a conflict kind of thing. It's like oh, so in this like just remember if you're fighting abortion rights, there's going to be another issue. Sure. And we're going to be able to use the same grounds and the same foundation because that's what you presented. So, mm. again, what's goose, good for the goose is good for the gander. I cannot believe you've never heard. <laughs> that's going to bother me. Like, why do I know that? Like, you say stuff I've never heard, but my parents aren't from here. So, it's like, I always attribute it to, like, I don't have American parents. So, that's why I've never heard this, this statement before. And I try to, like, register it. But this blows my mind. Like, Y'all, have you heard? Have you heard of what's good for the goose is good for the gander? Yo, put there's in the, a whole. Put in the comments if you've heard what's good for the goose is good for the there's gander. There's a whole. I can't remember what um, pop group back in the day when they had no, shows. Pop group. Yeah, when they had shows where they would like making the band those type of shows. There was a white girl a group. group. I don't think it. No, um, I don't think it was Danity Kane. Um, there was another group. Are they classified as pop. No, I'm saying I don't think it was Danny Crane. There's another group, mm. female group, and their song was Nicole um, Scherzinger was in there before she became part sure. of the Pussycat sure Dolls. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, the, they had a song. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Missed it. Missed it. I'm concerned. Um, I'm concerned. But yes, uh, and and everybody's favorite Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence Thomas said uh, due to is their that? due to their uh, their decision on this. Um, Judgment, I guess, would be the correct legal term. Is he supposed to be liberal? No. <laughs> he's conservative? I, I, yeah. I just assumed yes. because, I mean, I did the black thing, and I was like, oh, he's black, he's got to be liberal, but I guess he's not. No, no, by, by, by no means. Um, things that they'll, the other cases, uh, they feel like landmark cases, they feel should be looked at, which is gay marriage, uh, gay marriage uh, the right for uh, married uh, homosexual couples to have intercourse it's called uh sod sodomy i guess there was a case on that and um contraception i think was was the other one he said that they should they should revisit so uh but on what grounds on grounds that there's no the constitution doesn't provide protection for those situations the constitution didn't provide protection for black people not being enslaved hey look I'm just telling you what the man what the man said, what the man wrote. Okay, this? I'm not I'm not his proxy. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just giving you the I'm giving you the, the deets. Um, I mean, then we got a whole lot of overturning to do. So, yeah, but you know what's what's mind boggling to Isn't me he is he married to a white woman. I'm pretty sure the constitution that, that case was actually left out of it. He actually did mention convenient. that. One. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, mm. Was it loving loving v Virginia? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, what are some choice words that I'm going to keep to myself? Yeah. I've just, like I said, I've, I've, it's just crazy how, how people have so no. you were listening to higher learning. And I was. Dan was saying he got kicked off of going live on Instagram. Because he called Clarence Thomas a coon. I stand with Van. So you're for calling black I, people. I stand <laughs> I'm not one for okay. racial slurs, for really going out of my way to insult Epithets. people. I stand with Van. I'm sure I, Van. I'm go, sure. I'm sure Van would be very happy to I'm know that. I'm gonna tweet that. I'm gonna tweet that. Well, he might retweet that. you. He's retweeted me once. I'm gonna tweet that. It's very, very uh, highlight in my life. Do we have a Twitter? Van Lathan. Uh, we, as in Rush Five, no, yeah. we don't have a Twitter. Okay. I haven't got to, I haven't got confident enough to put our stuff on Twitter. They'd be flaming people. They will. <laughs> so they'll I think they'll come for me. You know, Facebook is just failing friends and just this episode. They're gonna be like, this dude. Don't although, know what's good for the goose is good for the kid. Yeah, no, they. Oh, but you know, that's that's fine. I'll I'll, I'll take it. But you know, of course, like today, 
uh, I got into some some stuff on Facebook because I shared a uh, a video that um, on his Facebook Ellie, page. Ellie Duncan, uh, a sports uh, ESPN um, anchor, had uh, she recorded a video. She did, didn't run uh, on any ESPN programming. She recorded it and then released it on her Twitter. So dude was upset talking about this is why he doesn't watch ESPN and it didn't even. And, and that was the irony in it because she said it literally in the first fifteen seconds of the video. Which means he a either didn't actually watch it, two he watched it and just is didn't absorb any doesn't know how to comprehend, mm -hmm. um, or he didn't watch it at all and just recognized her that she was from ESPN. Uh, but yeah, I posted the video, so I I posted it like a few days ago. I think it was over the weekend. I posted it. Oh, was it? It's I posted been it. It's been it's been a couple of days, but it, it it mind you, this work is this week has only been two days and it's felt like four. Yeah, so it's, it could it's have felt, been like Monday. Yeah, it's felt like like a long week. So I just posted it and I I couldn't tag her because she posted on Twitter. Um, I wanted to post it on Facebook. I couldn't tag her because I guess we're not friends or whatever. Um, so I just said shout out to you know, and it just it it, it kind of went. It, it gained some steam. It's been viewed like over like nine thousand times. Um, and it is most of the most of the responses have been pretty positive. Like it, nobody really commented, but it had been shared mm -hmm. like two hundred times or whatever. And um, today, I guess uh, the dissenting people. Uh, found it and so the, your, your boy said uh that's why i don't watch espn espn sports <laughs> as opposed to espn <laughs> as opposed to espn legal? But ESPN legal. cooking channel um espn uh home and home and garden um he said uh if i wanted to hear what was it left wing vert, virtue signaling by left wing idiots i'd watch uh msnbc msnbc and that man Rachel Maddow so normally you know I don't really respond to stuff and this is this is new territory for me because mm -hmm. while my Facebook page is open it doesn't really make it out into the normally it stays within family and friends um, I was gonna let it go but I just had time today yeah I, I didn't have sometimes time sometimes you just get a spirit to stir the pot I, I, I didn't have time but I had time but you made time and um and my issue wasn't with his objection to, I'm, I'm assuming his objection to what uh, Elliot was saying and that, you know, men and b the basis of the video mm -hmm. was that uh, a lot of men ran off with the girl dad hashtag when um, she kind of coined it when she was telling the story about her interaction with Kobe and then Kobe died. And then a lot of dads just post girl, dad, girl, dad, girl, dad, whenever they're doing like the simplest things mm -hmm. with, with their daughters. But she's like, when they're, uh, constitutional rights are in jeopardy or, or you know, and in, in being compromised, you know, it's dead silence. Mm -hmm. So she's like, don't just be a girl dad when it's a cool photo op. Mm -hmm. Be a girl dad when you're in your boardrooms, when you're lawyers or whatever, when you're making decisions that will impact the people coming behind you, your daughters. Absolutely. Which is fair. And I was even convicted, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'll post girl dad, hashtag girl dad real quick. And I had to think, am I actually doing, am I setting examples? Am I Am I um, making decisions? Am I having impact um, where I'm making the world present and future better for my daughters who mm -hmm. will come behind me and live beyond me? And it, it very convicting for me. And this is someone who, at least for the big issue that she was talking about, I'm pro-abortion, but or not pro-abortion. I'm pro-I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, wow. So that's why that's the main reason why I posted. I was like, this is this is good. Um, but I respect that person, that individual's right to, uh, object, but one didn't watch the video <laughs> and then was just like virtue signaling and left wing mm -hmm. idiots, which is like just talking points for people on the right, which is stuff they're just spewing because it's what they were, what they watch on their, on their programming. Mm -hmm. I just kind of got tired of it. I just, I just had, it was it was an itch. I just could not mm -hmm. scratch it. So I was, you know, I just responded. I was just like, clearly you're someone who can't think for yourself. Cause the first thing you came out with was virtue signaling and left wing idiot. I mean, it's on my Facebook. Anybody who follows me or you friends with me, it was, you can go look at it. But he was so obnoxious. Not you, the, this dude. I, know, was I was just, a little obnoxious too. You were too. I was I mean, being, I was, Matt, I was, and I was trolling. I appreciated the fact that Matt, Matt yeah. is such a real one. I love Matt. Yeah, um, I was. He saw like his like you didn't even put a bat signal, but he was like, "Oh my boy!" Nah, I was. It. He jumped in it too. And I was. I was good. I was just trolling. But that's allyship. 
or no, not allyship. That's accomplished. That's being an accomplice because he jumped in there and essentially you like he went privilege to privilege because that was just an ignorant white dude coming at you, a black male. And that's never going to be like an equal battle. Well, it, it wasn't equal because I was. Yeah, because you're educated and you're. I was superior. Yeah, but but from from the <laughs> way superior, so, but. from America, the way American society is set, it's set you to not be in a position of superiority um, if you don't recognize it within yourself. So that's where some one could recognize, like, okay, Matt was an accomplice for you coming in and being like, yo, I'm gonna use my white privilege to beat down this dude's foolish white privilege. Yeah, I don't, uh, that's just how I see it. Okay. I, I, I well, because I, I want to say, some, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it was, it was even that deep. It was, it, cause it's it, always deep because There's always there deep. was another dude who hopped in and then made it about like racial things that weren't really yeah, somebody even, somebody was saying like libertard. And yeah, I was it like, wasn't is even, that a word? it wasn't like, even, well, yeah, no, but they, people on the right make I've it up. I've never heard that before. It's the, he was saying stuff that wasn't even relevant to the actual topic people aren't, don't actually watch things and they so just, that's what that's why i was just like okay so this we're just, is either a bot or it's just some person who just i feel like a bot cannot be that you know it's some bots are sophisticated so um, that's sophisticatedly stupid right but uh yeah it was it was it was it was fun it was therapeutic yeah, normally i don't sometimes you have sometimes i like get on like news posts and i'll i'll like, normally that's yeah that's not my thing to really engage in somebody but my name betty will say something and i'll just like and I'll, or I'll say something. It's usually with Ashley, either Ashley or Olivia. Those two get me in trouble because they'll comment on some news post and then I'll comment like supporting them, and then people will jump in. And I'm like, yeah. "All right, let's roll the sleeves up. Like y'all want to get dirty? Yeah. We could get dirty." Yeah, I know, I know me. But it was it was a I, scene I actually highly encourage people to go and read that thread because it was I did not expect it. And it wasn't until mid, because you had said you'd gone back and forth, but I didn't even see the post, the initial post. So until I saw Missy post it in the group, she was like, someone's really going in. I was like, okay, well, I have time. Let me go read. And fortunately, my husband's capable because I didn't know. I was like, do I need to come in and like no. come with my own stuff? Because but, the, the moment you get, it becomes emotional for you. You've already lost. And that's, yeah. that's in any any situation mm -hmm. right like the moment you get emotional like that the other person's already won which is clearly what the other guy had, had gotten in he'd become emotional emotional For um, no re like, and i was just i was having fun with it <laughs> like i was he there's one post where he listed like 15 hashtags <laughs> I was messaging Matt. I'm like, yo, this man emptied the clip with his hashtag. Really like, did. whatever. Was it you or Matt who were like, oh, my, my man has no more hashtags? That was me. I was like, oh, you ran out because this one of his lives, he switched from hashtags to emojis. So he gave me the, the middle the finger, the oh, middle finger did? emoji. I missed that one. I yeah, saw so I was like, one. I was like, damn, did you did you run out of hashtags? I was kind of looking forward. I was what appreciating his creativity, like the ones that he was coming up with. So, um, it'll never. It's so beyond me that people will not recognize, and you've said it before, the ability to keep scrolling. Just scroll, baby. But I do it on a regular, people will post stuff on a regular basis, and I will either unfollow for 30 days, unfollow in general, <laughs> or just unfriend, or keep scrolling. But it's like, for, yeah, and, and I get it, but for me, again... People have the right to feel how they want to feel, they do, and so, and that doesn't mean that everybody who has, uh, who who is on the opposite side of an issue from you automatically has to be like um, hidden from your timeline or has to go away. And this is just like I said, this is just me because oh, you you do actually learn by having discussions with people who have a different viewpoint than you or who express feelings that mm -hmm. you haven't experienced or you haven't thought of or who look at things from a different vantage point. You may not agree on the issue at the end of the day, but you may be able to appreciate how someone gets to that decision. So that's why I I'll engage at least initially to see, OK, is this person going to come with like a civil constructive comment or are they just going to be wilding? If you wilding, then I'm going to troll you. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who have really good arguments and really good opinions and really good life experiences that get them to a certain position on a topic and you can't ever you can't ever get that perspective you can't ever be well-rounded as an individual if you're only consuming points of view that agree with 
that agree with you, right? So that's how you become aware of things that are going on. Number one, like if people are piling into U-Hauls and rolling up to Idaho, or that's just how you get perspective as to why someone who's conservative feels that way. Like what makes you a conservative or what makes someone a liberal, or what makes someone left of center, right of center, all these different things. Like you got to be able to go into other people's arena and not immediately go on the defensive just because what they say is something completely opposite from what you would say or what you would believe. Like, I think that's a big reason why we're where we are, where at least from a political standpoint, why our representatives and like our Congress is so divided, like why our federal government is so divided. You got, you got Democrats, you've got Republicans is because people have lost the ability to agree to disagree, but get to that result in a civil manner. We're never going to agree on everything, mm-hmm. but if you only stick with your tribe, you're never like it. It you don't. There's really no no growth. You only grow so much. You only get so much perspective. So, um, like Pete Buttigieg going on Fox News, like that's great. Mm-hmm. Like I wish more more people from Fox would go on to liberal talk shows and whatever, and and not try to control narratives and conversations, but talk about topics in which both sides disagree and let the audience, which is what these shows are supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. Let the audience come to their own conclusion and let the audience be, um, uh, learn, learn new, new, uh, information, get different points of view, develop different points of view. So that's why, like, that's why my page is open. Now there are certain things, there are certain people I want to follow because I'm not really about all that baby daddy drama. Men ain't black men ain't women ain't like I, I, if I'm friends with you and you post this stuff, I'm following you straight up. Like, off the rip but um i have conservative friends on facebook um i have like libertarian friends on facebook i obviously have liberal friends on facebook and you know i consume from all of them and i consider all of those viewpoints that they have because you know i don't i don't know it all Mm -hmm. and the people who i hang with we don't all know it all um and our way while it works for us isn't necessarily the universal right way either so I just think that's important. Now, not everybody can handle that. So do what's best for you because if it gets your blood boiling, that's not good for no, that's not good for nobody. So if you got to, if you got to mute, if you got to mute for 30 days, please mute for 30 days because especially for you because I don't want you taking none of that. I don't want no residual, residual stress. I get so much peace from muting certain people Residual dissenting. And then coming back and then like the 30 days are up and it's like, oh, yeah. that's usually like my trial to realize like we don't need to be friends anymore or I just need to unfollow you. If like after the 30 days I start seeing your content again and I'm like, I don't, I just, you don't do it for me. Um, but I do, I, I see where you're coming from and I respect that. It, it is important to have other viewpoints because, you know, I'm a black person and I have a lot of white friends. And if a lot of those white friends don't make efforts to understand black issues, we're we still continue the same cycle Mm -hmm. but are you understanding the black issues and also making efforts in your day-to-day life to to change things for other people of color so um it it is important to have diversity and to have and diversity diversity of color yes diversity diversity of of thought thought. um but intelligent thought not with with that though companies for y'all who are applying this stuff, companies that say they value diversity of thought over diversity and inclusion, it's a red flag. I'm just saying. It is. It it's is a red a, flag. It is a red flag. <laughs> this um, is a red flag. So. Speaking of companies. Spectrums. And so a lot of companies with this whole, you know, Roe v. Wade um, upturn, a lot of them are like, okay, we're going to pay for you to, for any woman who wants to have an abortion, transportation, whatever. But I'm like, two things. Two. Just two. How do you go to your boss and be like, yo, I need like, how do you, what is the process of even requesting that? I'm curious how, like, does that go through HR? Like, it's probably what? HR because it's supposed to be, uh, but then how do you, like, I don't, I'm curious if they're coming up with like a blanket term for any, like a, a particular type of medical leave so that it doesn't call well, out that it's for an so abortion. So I can, I can, I can speak to that oh, because you can. my company actually oh, came really? out with a similar okay. statement. Please enlighten me. No, not are you being funny or are you No, mean? I really don't oh, okay. know. Okay. <laughs> Please enlighten me. I was know like, if I go to my supervisor and I'm like, hey, uh, I need to have an abortion. So I, so I don't know exactly how it works, but I do know that um 
outlined in the company's email memo, they did specifically say that abortion was a medical procedure, which it is. Okay. That, so is, like that, is that is covered. So you just be like, yo, I got, I mean, I don't know if you just want to say it like on the company Slack, but you go to either your manager or your, or your PX and say, Hey, I, I need to go get this abortion or I need to go get this procedure done. Okay. And then, you know, it's, I think they, I think it's reimbursed. You can reimburse it up to a, a certain, certain amount. amount. Okay. So but they I actually guess, also, I think they said that they would cover the travel though as yeah, well and I the lodging and stuff. Travel lodging. So. Uh, and then recovery time. I guess. And my other thing was, which, you know, it might be. But not every company, no, maybe not every company is like that though. So true. I don't know. As for mine. I just wanted to make sure that privacy is being protected in that. But this follow up question could be no because it's. My thought is these companies are offering women, and it's important if you're trying to respect a woman's right to choose. But say someone chooses to have their baby, what resources are the company offering in that? Like, are you offering a decent maternity leave or is it just short term disability? And that's something that, that came up on Twitter. People are like, yeah, <clears throat> don't be fooled by these companies saying they'll pay for you to, to go wherever. But like, what are your medical benefits mm -hmm. like? Like, are they up to snuff or are they trash? Because so because like, like you said, if one decides to have a baby, like. Are y'all going to get three months off yeah. and to bond? Or is it like, is it more beneficial for a woman employee to have an abortion be out for two weeks yeah. and be home and then come back to work as opposed to a woman having a baby and being out for 12? Like that's, yeah. you know, a business decision of 10, 10 weeks that could make a difference. So that was something that popped in my head. Like, are they actually making the effort to ensure that, you know, she's getting time to recover she's getting time to bond it's important she's not she's and she has the funds to be able to afford and support that so i mean there's so many directions that this goes and i mean e even take into account like okay abortion roe v wade is gone but the government doesn't do america doesn't offer any ma parental leave so i can't have an i'm not saying i i can't have an abortion so i'm gonna have this baby but i don't have any there's what's what's the end game what's the follow-up yeah. how am i support how am i going to support this person that i'm essentially forced to have yeah so i mean there's there's a lot um and and there's a lot more education i need to gain on it um just mm -hmm. and just from a government perspective psychological perspective emotional perspective even the christian perspective but i think it's important to understand all of those perspectives um, individually and, and not you, you collide lip, them. You libtards need to go do your research. Am I a libtard? <laughs> I don't know. And it was so funny that going back to that exchange that they just automatically assumed that I was mm -hmm. a liberal because I had shared a video of a, of a Trump woman of a woman speaking. You should say uh, her, Trump her mind. It's just, just so. It's just again. It's just how polarized we are. Like you, autom people automatically assume mm -hmm. if somebody is for something, then they're automatically for everything yeah, that you that you've boxed. Uh, I mean, I love right wing person. tax. Like the way taxes get pulled from checks, I'm like, I, I feel, I feel that. No more taxes. I'm here for that. Mm. But I'm Americans against tax reform. But Americans for tax. I can't remember what the group is, but there's a group out there. But we need like, support, y'all. You need support for people who are having kids that are in those situations. I mean, it's it's just an yeah. interesting time. Um, but I was listening. I can't remember what I was listening to, but they were like, "Yo, black people, we've been dealing with this, like." We ain't had rights for forever, so it's not. It's like oh, just another thing. Like it's not a big deal. White people, black people have barely had rights over their body for a significant amount of time. You're too smart, you get lynched. You're not smart enough, you get lynched. Like you, you're not producing enough babies, you get lynched. Like you, there's we've been in it. Like you get it. Um, so this is just like oh well, welcome to the club. Like. Come on, Come on in, just, there's plenty of room. Yep, pull up a seat. So it's it's just an interesting time to be alive, is is what I'll say. And how, what a time! How how what are we a time. With that? We need. I need something less heavy. Uh, there was a video released. Um, I think Sunday. Body cam footage of a. Uh, shooting of a unarmed black man named Jalen Walker in Ohio. Have you seen this? I heard I about it. I haven't seen the video. I've heard a little bit about it. I heard about it. it. So uh, Jalen was pulled over for a uh, traffic violation and 
evaded police basically he didn't stop kept kept driving so there was a chase that i think at one point got up to like 80 miles per hour um it's according to police that he is uh alleged to have fired a shot from the car i don't know if it was at police or just out of the car who knows um but during the there's traffic cam video that shows like a spark coming from the from the car as it's getting on to uh to an interstate um got to a point where he pulled into a, a parking lot uh there were cars that kind of surrounded him a couple of different cruisers several cruisers and um he got out of the passenger side wearing a ski mask which is interesting um and ran so as the cops converged on him they tried to use tasers uh, didn't work so he gets to a point where he's running from them he turns according to cops he made a uh, threatening gesture and um they fired 90 rounds right 90 shots striking him 60 times some of them even as he was on the ground mm-hmm. and the car uh they found a uh, handgun um, and a wedding ring, wedding band. So what a, a lot, a big piece of information that did not come out uh, until obviously until there's investigations and stuff is that uh, Jalen was engaged Aww. to his high school sweetheart who I think in May um, died in a tragic car. I think it was either hit and run or it was, it was tragic, whatever it was. And according to family and friends, he had been a little, obviously, mm-hmm. a little affected and hadn't been acting him himself, which may or may not explain his behavior that night, morning, early morning. But uh, at the time when she was killed, he was unarmed. The gun was found in the car, which he left and was running away from. And he was shot 60 times. And you have the uh, Highland Park mm-hmm. gunman who killed six, no, seven. seven people, injured more. 24, maybe. Was uh, apprehended alive. Mm-hmm. Now, these are two totally different situations, right? Um, obviously, one happened in Illinois and one happened in Ohio. Different in terms of they didn't happen like in the same place. Um, but I got to tell you, um, it's so crazy how dude who just killed multiple people, Mm -hmm. um, is, is apprehended without harm and a young black man who should not have run from police, obviously, Mm -hmm. um, was running away from police like multiple cops um, had to be shot period, no less 60 times and shot at 90 times. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mind boggling to me. Um, It's how that happens. And I know um, maybe this is something we should have had (laughs) had cousin Mark call in and give perspective. And I actually, we haven't spoken about it uh, in the group chat. So maybe, maybe we will. Um, but I know cops, when they get to the point where they feel there is a threat, are taught to eliminate the threat. So there's no shoot for the knee, oh, just shoot his arm, shoot the gun out of his hand or anything like that. They shoot to eliminate. Um, but I think it's not so much the eliminate the threat. I'm more concerned about the mentality in that you shoot this individual, shoot at this person 90, 90 times. times. And continue shooting him as, even as he's on the ground mm-hmm. and no longer a threat. You know it gets worse, though. Why does it get worse? Because after all that... He was handcuffed. He was handcuffed. Yeah. So... So I, I actually asked Mark about that. Um, and again, I don't want to speak for him. But he, he did say that it's that's kind of... That's a training thing. And it's not... They I think he said they don't train... Uh, they don't differentiate, right? So when a suspect is, is on the ground you go to handcuff them because you never know what could. So they just train like that way. Um, and even he kind of said, hopefully this is okay to say this, um, that cops don't always think, 
right? So like you shoot somebody, they just it's just instinctive. It's kind of like in UFC, in UFC when they knock they knock a fighter they no they knock their opponent down. They always you always see that they go in to eliminate them, and the ref has to pull them off. Mm-hmm. It's okay. it's it's training, like it's it's almost Boxing, instinctive. Yeah. It's almost instinctive at that point. Um, that might have been a bit of a reach for comparison's sake, but that's just I watch a lot of UFC I mean, videos. I can see it. If you are if, if you're you train. Uh, you know how many certain hours and you're trained how many times you go through this process this regimen when it actually happens like adrenaline is running you just you're almost mm-hmm. acting off muscle memory it's just what you've been trained to do so that's why a lot of cops do it they did allegedly according to reports they did try to give him medical attention but i mean after at that point what <laughs> after 60 bullets i mean he didn't say a chance i think he got seven shots in the face like yeah I mean, it, it's it's tragic. It's it's really hard to have you anything to even say. Like it's for me, it's frustrating. It's like this white kid who has videos all over the internet, who was has done stuff in the past that has raised bought his guns legally. Bought his guns re- legally. Criminals. They keep they, these criminals keep buying their guns keep legally. Doing legal stuff. But I, what happened to I, the illegal criminals? But I could have sworn. Like criminals don't abide by the law. It's just somebody. We got to talk. These these criminals. There needs to be. A they need. They need. They need. They, they need, need to understand. Tra- they're talking. They there are talking points out there, Jess. They, they need to abide by these they talking need points. Training. But um, it's frustrating because you know Highland Park is where Ferris Bueller was shot. Um, where risky they business. Shot Ferris Bu- oh, <laughs> the movie. <laughs> the movie. I'm like, what did when did Matthew when did Matthew when did they shoot Matthew? When did Matthew get shot? Matthew's fine. You're talking about the okay, they filmed they, they filmed the movie. It's okay. a very That's my bad. it's a very expensive suburb of Chicago. So it's yeah. not Chicago, Chicago where like people probably it's south side. Yeah, people yeah. thought like, oh, it's just black people shooting at black people. No. These, this this was a guy, I think his family owns a deli, like he's he's clearly troubled um but he was like he's posted videos online he there's reasons that he should have been i think the fbi fbi even like communicated with him um they flagged him but you know he's a suburban white kid it's it i don't know how like i know how society sees has been framed or designed to see the black individual um but it's frustrating because like you said this kid was just he was apprehended he wasn't hurt he probably doesn't have a bruise on his body he he intent he planned and plotted and murdered people and if i'm not mistaken this young man from akron um was doing a doordash delivery um his crime was just being black i mean obviously he did other things but if he was a white kid like he probably this outcome would have been completely different. Um, it's disgusting. It's frustrating. It's, um, and no, I'm not a law enforcement professional. I'm not here to speak for law enforcement. I, I get it. You know, you have to get home to your family as well, but why? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, somebody, I just need somebody to explain the 60, the 90 rounds. Why? It's, it, it, and I and I watched. I probably shouldn't have, but I watched the uh, I watched the the, the body, body cam, cam, and it's it's grim. I mean, there's no <laughs> you can't it can't ever not be grim, right? Mm-hmm. A video of somebody being being killed, um, but just the amount of bullets going off, and then you see his body drop to the ground, and then the amount of the rounds still. still going off. It's um, it's scary. Yeah. Um. But that's just, it, yeah. it, it's just the, the, it's the unfortunate outcome of the black man in America. I hate to say, I, I, you know, one wrong move. Again, I'm not condoning that he, you know, continued driving off and all of that. But well, it's, it's like I said last year, last season, right? It's like, it almost seems like in these instances, black men, black people aren't allowed to make mistakes. Mm-mm. All Probably the mistakes not. that they make are, are fatal, mm-hmm. and it's right? their fault. So, and ultimate, ultimate mistakes. So, um, I hear uh, Sonoma coming through the floor, not physically, but her her whales we film under her bed. Her whales are coming through the floor. So, I, I guess unfortunately, we'll have to stop there. Um, 
but unfortunately, I, I it's sad to say, I, I imagine this won't be the last instance Mm-mm. of an unarmed black Probably man being killed. Episode, by, but hopefully, be. you know, we won't be talking about 60, 90 rounds going off. But um, so in here, uh, this will probably be a third. Today's Wednesday. It'll be a Friday drop. I think Friday. You'll see this on Friday. So we'll uh, we'll be back next week. I still, I still, we need to talk about um, McDonald's dad. No, I'm not talking about McDonald's. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. And it was, I feel like it wasn't real. So no, we're not going to do that. Um, so we're going to get out of here. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Google. Uh, also, free Britney Griner. Bring her home. Please. It's been too long. Do what y'all got to do. Uh, get her home. And anybody else over there who shouldn't be over there, who's been imprisoned um, unfairly, unrightfully, bring them home. It's been too long. Especially Biden, if they're black. Biden, do what you got to do. Um, anything? That's it. Cool. That's it. We out of here. Y'all be safe. Vibe Tribe, we love you. And we will see y'all on the next one. Be safe. Oh, stay cool. Nice. Pray your AC yeah. doesn't go out. None but some grub pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Yeah. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now.